Um, all right. What about CS50? Um, despite my feelings about Harvard and Ivy League schools, which are a total sham, uh, more than 60% of people that go to Ivy League schools are people who have never had to take a test in their life to be able to get in past entry because their family went there. And so I have, I should probably do a whole video on that. Um, but CS 50 is free, right? And a lot of people have been recommending CS 50. Um, the way it worked when I last evaluated, which was more than five years ago, was you would pay to get the certificate. You didn't have to pay to go through the material, but you had to pay to get the certificate. Um, and the fact that you have to pay to get the certificate and the credential is up to you. Um, again, there's another video on getting a job and how you the, you get a job by establishing trust. I need to do a lot of the videos on this, but there's one that's been made already that getting a job is about trust. And if that credential, if that piece of paper is going to establish trust with your potential employer, depending on what you're going for, which completely depends on your plan and your job, tons of videos on that. Um, you need to know all that up front. Then CS50 could be a very nutritious, uh, you know, offering on the buffet of educational resources available to you. And you're putting the, the items in the buffet on your plate, right? Um, I consider CS50 to be some of the most nutritious of the educational buffet offerings out there. Uh, David, David, he's pretty fun. Um, the guy who teaches it, he, you know, he's, I, I don't like his style, but a lot of people really like it and they think he's amazing. Um, I just, to me, he comes off as a Harvard person and, and that is very distracting, <laughs> but I, I watched all of the CS 50 thing probably back in 2017. I want to say it was a long time ago. And most of CS 50 is actually run by the TAs. Um, I mean, they have a, they obviously have a big budget, but the most, the most important reason to consider doing CS 50 eventually, um, is be, two reasons really. Uh, one is the, the content, it, it, the content is spot on relevant, uh, to getting started in computer science, right? Um, it's not practical though. Nothing that you're going to learn in CS 50 is going to get you a job. It's just not. It's going to help you understand computers and programming, uh, but it's not going to it's not going to directly help you get a job. But again, I still feel like for the same reason I suggest you should learn C for understanding, uh, which you can do, you know, working through the book uh, and get a similar amount of of expertise. Um, in fact, if you were so to keep with our metaphor here, um, if, if you're coming up to the educational buffet and you see CS50 there, and you see, you know, head for C, um, I would go for head for C first, and I would, you know, eat that. <laughs> and then I would maybe add in CS50. And uh, so let's talk about what's in it. Um, uh, CS50 is, uh, if I remember, I don't know if they still do this, but it, they used to start with Scratch. And they would have, or Blockly, whatever version of it it is. It's that thing where you drag you drag around blocks to, to write code. And they're not the only uh, professional university level um, organization that does uh, Blockly. They still do that? Yeah. And the, the motivation and the, the understanding of that is this is going to help you think. There's there, One of the reasons I don't like any of the computer science kind of things is because they focus overly on something called... Um, computational thinking and I need to do a whole video on computational thinking but the short version is as summarized by the guys who created um, uh, co what is it code combat how much they hate the term because it is especially in 2013 it became uh, a buzzword for anything that helped you think like a computer right and the person in, who wrote the blog, which I totally agree with, was making the, the argument that foreign language and mathematics and a bunch of other things help you think logically, uh, help you with computational thinking, which is just the ability to organize your thoughts into algorithms and procedures and stuff. And 
the argument is there's many ways to do that. So why would I bring this up? Because the reason that organizations like CS50 and Harbor and everybody use Blockly and these absolutely, totally, completely useless languages um, is to get you starting to think like a computer. And, and I don't buy that. I, I don't buy it. Um, that said, I have a story. I have a story. You like stories? Okay. So we're going to talk about all the languages that the CS50 teaches and how they teach it. And, and that will help you make a decision. Um, and, and you can tell me if it's changed since, since 2017 or whatever. So um, one of the most brilliant people that ever came to my door, and, and I mean absolutely raw baseline intelligence, um, they came to my door and their, their mom said, we just can't keep up. We can't keep our son uh, challenged and we're so glad to find you. Would you mind evaluating him? And I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it. This is a great time to tell the story. So um, this person came in and after about 20 or 30 minutes uh, of just sitting with them, the mom went across to the pub, I think. <laughs> She's super nice. And um, and so he he said, I said, well, should, tell me what you've been doing. What is your, you know, what are your goals? He goes, well, I've been, I've been all I've got I've been working on is Scratch. I, this, this should probably go on a Scratch and What About Scratch video. I'll probably say the story again in What About Scratch video, but whatever. Um, so anyway, this guy um, proceeds to, and I'll, I'm going to summarize because I'm going to put that in another video. He proceeds to show me the biggest Scratch board I've ever seen. And, I mean, it was, if, if you know about visual programming, uh, on scratch you know that you have to have you have to be able to zoom in and out to see the whole thing right so it was like google earth zooming out to see the whole world because he had so much stuff in there this this kid had done things in scratch because that had been the his only method of writing code uh for something like two or three years and he had done things that i have never seen i've never seen anybody and it was his only thing so in, during the rest of our hour together, I showed him Python. I showed him the rudimentary parts of Python on the terminal, and he immediately, the first thing he wrote was, was he did his own uh, Pythagorean theorem uh, function in Python. That was the first thing he wanted to do. He didn't, he didn't want to make things move on the screen. He didn't want to make you know, a silly game. The very first thing he did, and th we're talking about a kid who was like 10 years old, 10 or, 10 or 11 years old. He wasn't even in, I think he had maybe had pre-algebra already, but, um, and by the way, algebra, you know, before there, there's before algebra and there's after algebra and all the people that I've helped learn coding, it's a monumental. Once they get, func once they start thinking functionally, um, uh, coding is breeze. It's like easy to pick up after that. Um, yeah. And so, uh, so the, the, the point of it is that this, once he learned about Python and, you know, an actual language. Uh, he didn't. He didn't want to even look at Scratch anymore, right? And and I I believe that CS50 uh, does that. They don't spend um, a lot of time on Scratch. And it sounds to me, Dan's saying there, it's, it's still the same order that it was when I evaluated it. It goes from Scratch and then straight into C, which seems really weird. Right, because C is a really, really low level language. And I think the reason they do that is to show you the ultimate in high level languages. I mean, Scratch is probably one of the highest level languages there is. And then C, which is, you know, the second lowest level language you can write in besides assembly. And um, and then they put Python in there and then they turn SQL to do it because it's a declarative language and HTML, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML and CSS. I like that they do that because HTML and CSS are both declarative languages and JS is a, is a procedural language. So I do like, it's kind of interesting that they did put SQL in there. Um, and, and that, I mean, that for, for, a comp, for somebody who's trying to teach you computer science, very strictly speaking, computer science, teaching you the difference between declarative and, and procedural languages is a really good idea um, of, uh, about understanding computer science in general. Um, which by the way, people complain all the time. There should be a separate video about this. You're going to get a CS degree. I mean, you'll get, you'll be really good at understanding how computers work. That's what it is. You might not be able to get a job though, because you're not being taught how to use a computer to produce code and solutions that are going to get you a job that you just aren't. You're being taught how computers work really well. You might end up coming out of it, writing your own computer language, 
you know, which is cool and all might prove how smart you are, but it doesn't do anything with regard to solving a specific problem for a specific business. And that's how you get a job. Um, and, uh, plus they do the Python web framework. Um, so, um, so my, I think CS50 is a rather nutritional offering on the buffet of educational resources out there. Um, do I think that it's worth buying the certificate? Probably not. Uh, but again, it all depends on the target career you're going for and specifically the target organization. You may try to get, I've done a whole video on this, but they're, depending on the organization, they might see that CS50 degree and they'll see that you, you know, took the effort to do it and that's cool, right? But, you know, if you've got to weigh that against being able to say, um, here is a project you know, this is a web API project that I made that does something I like, uh, whatever that is, it could be Pokemon for God's sake, you know, a registry of all the Pokemon out there. There's already a Pokedex, by the way. Um, and you know, what, 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 do, what is going to produce the most level of trust with your potential employer? Uh, a passion project that does all the same things that demonstrates you used those tools or a piece of paper from CS50 that says you understand the difference between a procedural and declarative language and you've finished all the homework. I, it's up to you to decide, but most employers want the experience over the piece of paper. Most of them, not all there. There are definitely places that will take, uh, that will take the piece of paper over that. Yeah. You can buy the cert from edX, uh, a digital copy of free. If you're going you, you, I don't, yeah. Uh, the best alternative to learn the basics in computer and computer science. Um, I've already said this. There's already other videos on this. Um, so I'll just refer to that. But other than to say the best alternative to computer science programming courses is actual experience building things you care about that prove you want to do that thing and can can do that thing. Right. And if, and if, if you've already decided, if you've already decided that your career is going to be a software developer, back end, front end, mid range. You should already have made that decision, or you should already have sampled some of the work in that area to find that out. And not only that, you should also have targeted one of five computers. I'm sorry, not computers. One of five employers that you want to go work for. And you and this is in the beginner boost. This is there's other videos, earlier videos in the beginner boost about this. These are all on skillsec.io. And they talk about these essential steps before decide before you build your learning curriculum, before you start filling your plate of learning resources from the buffet. You need to know that stuff up front. So before you even do that. And a lot of people that ask me this question, what do you think about this and this? There they haven't done that yet. So please, please make sure you understand those very, very difficult steps that need to be done. Uh, I've done a lot of videos about that and how I came, I mean, the one video about X mission where I had to change from Russian to, uh, to computers, I'm sorry, from, from Russian to something, I, I couldn't work in Russia anymore, my wife wouldn't let me, my first wife. And, and so I had to change jobs and I called up X mission and I said, what's the number one skill I could learn that would make it so that you had to hire me on the spot? I, I'm, thank you for your time. They let me talk to an engineer. They said, learn Perl. I learned Perl in 20 days. I got the book. I set forward a, a very strategic learning plan um, and I got the job. I, not for them, for another company that paid me three times what I was making at the, at the tour guide company. They actually apologized for not paying me more money because I set about, I, I knew I wanted to do internet things. I was like, oh, this is really fun. Well, I, how do I work for an internet service provider? So I called one up. That All that stuff is in other videos, right? That activity where you would define what you want to be and where you want to be what you want to be, that has to happen before you start filling your plate of educational resources because you're going to make a mistake. If you don't, I've been saying this over and over and over again because people make this mistake all the time. And um, that includes CS50, right? What What is CS50 getting you? What is it getting you? And who cares about CS50? You know, well, I don't know. Whoever, whoever my employer eventually is going to be, I'm sure they're going to like it, right? How do you know that? You don't even know. You don't even have a random sampling of potential employers that you would like to consider, which is something you should have. You should already have made a very short list of like 
you know, five to 10 potential employers and you should be specifically working on a strategy to get a job at either one of those specific companies or a company like them. And that will shape everything else, your educational choices, your choice of, of personal learning networks, how you're going to seek out people and learn to meet them. When you meet them on the street, you're like, Hey, you're one of the people on my five, on my, on my list of five companies. Tell me all about your job and what you do. Because everything in your, and not to mention your manifesting powers, it's a very hippie term, but you know, you're, you're now, you, you're visualizing where you're going to be and where you're going to work. And, 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 you know, as soon as I called up that next mission and I talked to the engineer, I was like, I want to be that engineer. And I had something mentally to latch onto. I'm going to be an engineer like that guy. And I never met that person, but I was grateful for them for taking the time, whether that happens because you cold call a place that you want to work for, or you meet them at a random meetup. This is their separate videos on this, but CS 50 doesn't apply until you know that, right? Do you, I mean, God, if I, if I had talked to this engineer and I said, do you think CS 50 will help me get a job here? And they'd be like, <laughs> he would have laughed at me They're like, no, learn Pearl. We need you to learn Pearl. They don't teach, do they teach Pearl and CS 50? No, they teach scratch and see if they're not. well, that's cool and all, but we're not hiring you. I'm sorry. That's how the way, that's the way it goes. 